and lead this football team. And and listen, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Those aren't those aren't my words. Those aren't Howie's words, Jeffrey's words. Those are his words. I respect his opinion and his words. Those aren't mine. Please don't put words in my mouth, or we're going to have a problem. And and um, Carson's our guy. Bottom line. End of story. Doug Peterson says, don't speak for me, Damian Woody. Good to see you with us. But you know I'm starting with Max when we're talking about Carson Wentz. Max, should the Eagles regret choosing Carson over Foles? Of course. Of course. What are we even talking about? We're not talking about, well, at the time, I understood their decision and decision-making process, so you shouldn't have regrets. That's not the question. The question is, what we know, given what we now know, if you could do it again, would you do it? Or do you regret doing it? How could they not regret doing it? Guys, I'm the one who was, among others, who was saying Carson Wentz is the MVP at the time he, was, he got hurt. Was it three or four years ago now? I, I would say he's the MVP over Brady over everyone. I thought he was great. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Then he got hurt. I was like, these dudes are dead in the water. Come on. Nick Foles takes over. They win the Super Bowl. He leads them through the play through the end of the regular season, through the playoffs, and they win the Super Bowl. And he wins Super Bowl MVP. If it was just that, you say he caught lightning in a bottle. Wentz put him in a position to win. You know, home field and all this. He he had a great team around him. Okay, the next year, Wentz. I want to say the Eagles were like five and six when Foles took over the team. They were either five hundred or a game under five hundred and dead in the water. The team wasn't going anywhere. They were dead in the water. Foles takes over, goes 4-1, and one, beats Chicago at Soldier Field, where Chicago was a lot of people's sleeper pick. They might come out of the NFC. Look at this historically great talent on defense. Almost beat the Saints at New Orleans to follow up beating the Bears at Soldier Field. Receiver turns around. He hit the receiver. They might beat the Saints in New Orleans. They came that close. That's a title defense. Unsuccessful eventually, but that's a title defense. Now the Eagles had a choice to make. What do they do? They choose Wentz. Foles goes to Jacksonville. It's a bad situation. I get it. But so, so what could Foles do with this team? They're too banged up. They don't have enough. You might as well have Wentz. No. Given what we know now, Wentz is not enough to cover up for your mistakes. Well, they made the playoffs last year. You're saying Foles couldn't have in that division? Last year, Wentz did not play well down the stretch. They won oftentimes in spite of Wentz, who played poorly, especially in the second half of games, down the stretch against bad teams. Foles could have done that, or he might have. But even if he didn't, what was the point of last year or this year? You think you're really going anywhere, even if you happen to make the playoffs? Knowing what we know now, even if Foles couldn't have put you over where Wentz put you, it's a much smaller deal. The Eagles have their hands tied right now because they've given over $100 million guaranteed to a guy who has regressed as a quarterback and is a kind of middle-of-the-pack guy. For that, give less money to Foles. He ain't going to do any worse, and if he does do a little worse, he ain't going to make a difference. Meantime, if you put a team around Foles, which you're more able to do because he gets paid so much less, he can win you a Super Bowl. I disagree. Um, and the reason I disagree, first of all, Wentz is about four years younger than Nick Foles. Secondly, Nick Foles hasn't achieved anything outside of the city of Philadelphia. Uh, when he was in Jacksonville, he was winless. He's two and four in Chicago uh, with 10 touchdowns and seven interceptions in the six games that he's been a quarterback. Uh, the bottom line is, is that Nick Foles had lightning in the bottle and obviously delivered the Super Bowl championship. Came back the next year, got him to the playoffs. Both times, Carson Wentz got injured. The first time, Carson Wentz was an MVP candidate. The second time, he hadn't fully recovered and he was five and six as a starter before he went down and then Nick Foles came in and saved the day. Ever since then, not just Carson Wentz, but the entire Philadelphia Eagles squad has been ravaged with injuries. We know of a of a wide receiver, uh, you know, or rather a quarterback in college that was a wide receiver. We had guys that was coming off the practice squad. Nelson Aguilar and Alshon Jeffrey weren't available. Deshaun Jackson goes down. Uh, when you look at it from that perspective and you look at the plethora of injuries that they've t that have taken place over the last several years, I don't think that you can just look at Carson Wentz and say, hell no, he's not that guy. Now, this year, he's been absolutely awful. Over the last four games, he hasn't even completed 60% of his passes. He's completed 58% of his passes on the year. He's been unimpressive. I'm asking, when are we going to look at uh, uh, Doug Peterson? Because one of the reasons why people speculated that Nick Foles was successful with Doug Peterson is because Doug Peterson was very comfortable coaching him. If you want to make that argument, then I say, yeah, because you're believing in the coach more than you're believing in the quarterback. And you're saying, this is what the hell we're going to do. But 
The flip side to it is that if you're Doug Peterson, when are you going to acclimate yourself to coaching Carson Wentz so Carson Wentz is not regressing under your watch? Doug Peterson is a former quarterback. Doug Peterson is a guy that came from the offensive side of the ball. Doug Peterson has coached quarterbacks before. Why is it that this guy is regressing on your watch, but we're sitting here talking about Carson Wentz and not Doug Peterson? That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. So I'm just looking at it. And if Nick Foles was wreaking havoc and tearing it up and doing his thing, that would be an entirely different situation altogether. That's not what I'm seeing when I've watched Nick Foles. That hasn't been what I've been seeing when I've watched Nick Foles since last year. So as a result of that reality, along with his own durability issues, my mentality is, is that the younger guy with a greater upside in a lot of people's mind was the right direction for the Philadelphia Eagles to go. And I know Carson Wentz has been awful. I'm not defending that. What I'm saying is I'm looking ahead, I'm looking at the future, and I find it very, very difficult to believe that this is going to continue. And that's why I would go with the younger guy who's considered more talented with a greater upside who's just having a very bad year. Listen, I have to agree with Stephen. A. I think this whole conversation is really absurd. I mean, let's let's really look at this whole thing. And Stephen, they brought up some some points about Nick Fold and, Car and Carson Wentz. Number one, when we look at uh, Carson Wentz back in 2017, Max, you would even admit that Carson Wentz was an MVP candidate. He was having that type of season. The personnel ar around the Philadelphia Eagles was much better than what we're seeing with the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Hell, the Philadelphia Eagles are a shell of themselves as far as their roster and, and, and coaching situation is concerned. Okay, and then to follow up on 2008, the, two, the following season, 2018, I mean, listen, Carson Wentz had over 3,000 3, yards and only seven. He had uh, 21 touchdowns and only seven interceptions in uh, in a year that he found himself injured, uh, injured as well. So it wasn't like he was just playing bad football in 2017 or 2018. It was a situation where Nick Foles, again, caught lightning in bottle and was able to make things happen with the coaching staff that he was familiar with. Now we fast forward, all right? You got... Frank Wright, who was also part of that staff, who's now the, the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, who was a, a big part of that, that quarterback room uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. So now you all, now, not only do you have a drain as far as talent is concerned, personnel, but as far as the coaching staff that has all played while we're seeing Carson Wentz playing the, playing the way that he's playing. Now, I'm not absolving Carson Wentz in this particular situation because he has been stinking up the joint. He has been living up to his contract. But to say that Nick Foles should have been the guy instead of Carson Wentz, what what in it what in their history, what in Nick Foles' history has shown you that he should have been the guy that should uh, that should have been the guy in, uh, in Philadelphia? Was the fact that he went to Jacksonville, signed oh a huge God. contract, and then he got replaced by Gardner Minshew? It wasn't a huge contract. He got, wait, 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 listen, the fact that he went to Phil uh, went down to Jacksonville and he amply got replaced by Gardner Minshew. OK, then he gets traded mm -hmm. to the Chicago Bears and we look at the Chicago Bears right now. You could make an argument that Mr. Trubisky should, might be uh, replaced Nick Foles in this situation. So where has Nick Foles like shown you right argument, now? Sure. Right. Wh where has Nick Foles shown you right now that he should that he would have been the better pick over Carson Wentz? Because I, I just I don't see anything uh, that's that tells simple. me that at all. It, it, it's very simple. It's very simple. Nick Foles is not the kind of guy who's going to take a bad team and make him good. He needs a lot around him. That, there's no question about it. But if you have a lot around him, he'll mess around and win you a Super Bowl. Not he might. He will. He already did it. Like, he is, he is absolutely does, capable of doing that. It, and then he made a valiant title defense. Does the Philadelphia, in, does the Philadelphia in, Eagles have a lot around, have a, have a lot, a, a lot around him right now? No, and this is my no, point. they don't. Damian, they this don't. is my point. Carson Wentz can't do anything with it either. Carson Wentz can't do a thing with it either. So since you have two guys, neither of whom can do anything with it, right, at this moment, you want to pay a dude $100 million or $21 million? Uh, $21 million is what's left on, on Nick Foles' guarantee. It wasn't a huge contract. It was an upper-middle-class contract. Damien, what else has Nick Foles done? Stephen A., he's only succeeded in Philadelphia. That's right, but we're talking about Philadelphia. And he was, as a quarterback, 8-2 and two, with 27 touchdowns and two interceptions way before Peterson when Chip Kelly was the coach. And he was a stud at Arizona and let me even tell you something now about the Bears they have a thin receiving core and no offensive line Foles ain't doing any worse than Trubisky was here's the thing 
I'm not pretending Foles is a superstar. He's a plus 500 quarterback throughout his career. He has more wins than losses, pretty big sample size. Throughout his career, he will throw two touchdowns to every interception. He's not an incredible stud. What he is is a competent NFL quarterback who's clutch and big under pressure, whose teammates like to follow him, and you can get him for less than 50 cents on the dollar what you have to pay for a guy like Carson Wentz, who's still not being accountable as to his team, showing up at press conferences talking about, I may never learn when to eat it and not to extend the play. That's just the way we play well, football around here. Well, so, yeah, just I'd rather have fools. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, but you're wrong. But the bottom line is this. That's just for now. You're not paying Carson Wentz for one season. You're paying him for a multitude of years. And the fact of the matter is you can't, you can't anticipate that the plethora of injuries that they've incurred is going to continue. You're hopeful that that won't be the case. And as far as your arguments go, I get where you're coming from in terms of Nick Foles and Carson Wentz not being much of a difference. But, again, you were the one that highlighted the upside. You might no longer believe that, but the fact of the matter is you didn't get the, you didn't pay the guy